Hey, what's up, Wolves fans? This is one on one with Elijah Burns. So Elijah Burns, a six foot eight forward, coming in for uh, to the Wolves this season. How are you doing? It's been an amazing experience uh, being out here playing with the guys, and it's been enjoying my time here. So uh, how have you, have you been you know, adapting to, to Worcester as a, uh, you know, since, since you've been in? You know, it's been going well. Uh, every, with everything opening up a little bit, I got to see a little bit of the town, but I'm just really focused on being on the court with my teammates, and it's been going great. Well, so you, you're very hard working when it comes to the court. You know, yeah. I'm not sure whether you're outside that you know, you'd like to let you know, sort of social media or anything get to, but on the court, you definitely do a lot of your talking on the court as well. I'm really relaxed off the court. I kind of really laid back, dude. When I step between those lines, it's time to go. Uh, so you get a little bit more uh, competitive and just you know, fierce. I'm saying because on the court you are a hustler. Mm -hmm. you, know, you go after every rebound, you chase every point. Uh, there's, there's a couple times each game where you're ending up falling to the floor, and I think there's something gone wrong, but you yeah. just get back up and brush it off. Yeah, those, those are painful. i got to limit the times I'm on the floor, but you know, it's just for me just playing hard, so I live with those. Mm. So uh, obviously you were born in, 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 uh, in Troy, New York. Uh, what was it like you know, growing up around in, in the New York area? You know, I loved it. Uh, we're two hours, two and a half hours from New York City. Uh, all my family is, is pretty much from Troy, so it was good to have them around. I had a great, a great upbringing. Two parents helped me out and uh, just pushed me to be the best man I could be. And obviously, you, know, you mentioned they, they pushed you to be the best man. You know, did they push you towards basketball as well? We just kind of played everything growing up. I have an older brother, and we played basketball, football, and baseball when we were growing up. And I really had a liking to basketball, and I just stuck with it. I mean, having a brother myself, you know, the, the kind of competitive nature's there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, like, did, did you push each other as well to, to try and get better yeah, at we, each other? we definitely did compete, and, uh, and when we got to a certain age, we were five and a half years apart, so he was in college, and he would just push me to, to get better and reach my goals. As, I mean, that, did you kind of use him as, like, a point to sort of aim towards as well? More academically. Mm -hmm. uh, I would try to be better than him in school. Yeah. That was the thing. It's like, when, whatever grades he got, I wanted better. So I would just compete <laughs> everything academically. I always wanted to be better than he was. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, what, what would you say are your strong suits in terms of ac uh, yeah, academics and education? I just love learning, like mm -hmm. learning, learning about people. I was a psychology major at Notre Dame. So just learning about people, how people work um, was, was my main focus. I would say like secondary school, history was probably my favorite mm -hmm. subject. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so obviously you've been, you've been around, you know, you've been born in, and, and raised in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you also went to Indiana, as you mentioned, with Notre yeah. uh, Dame. Uh, and you also moved to Bulgaria as well. I was there briefly, yeah. Yeah, so how, how have they all like, compared to each other? So we leave in one place. I lived in Jersey for two years. Oh, I, went course, to yeah. I went to prep school in New Jersey, and uh, every place that I've been has really shaped me. I've learned from everywhere I've been, and I've been in Worcester for a little bit now, and I'm learning from, from being here. I'm able to take something from every environment that I am and, and kind of shape that into the man I become. Yeah. So um, we're going to go into a few, you know, questions, sort of comparing different things to each other. Uh, I like to give people ultimatum questions to see, you know, kind of give off a bit more of their personality. Okay. So the most important question I always have to start with, are you a cat person or a dog person? Dog. Dog person? Yes. Do you, have you grown up with like a family dog? We had a dog when I was younger and I've just always been a dog guy. Mm. What, was the, what was the breed? We had a pit bull. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, what was, the, what, what was the name of the pit bull? Champ. Oh, that's, a, that's a, such a cool name as well. You go into a dog park, you know, like you just scream champ. You just come running. So, yeah, no, I definitely want to get another dog once I get on my own doing my thing. Yeah, I was going to say, would you look to get another, another Most definitely, I'm going to get another pit bull. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, outside of the court, you know, doing stuff to relax. You know, mm -hmm. Are you more of like a book guy or are you more of a film guy? It kind of movie? just varies. Uh, lately I've been watching a lot of like Netflix and stuff, but I'm more into music. I listen to music a lot of the time, R&B, soul music. That's really more my personality. Yeah, I was just saying, like, is that, is that you know, the go-to, like say you're on the, you know, on, the, on the bus down to an away game, headphones music. on? Music, yeah, I'm just listening to music the whole time. I might pop on a show, but most likely I'm just listening to music. Is that the, is that the secret to, to Elijah Burns getting in the zone? <sighs> no, nah, the secret is breathing. The secret <laughs> is just breathing and controlling my breath and just staying relaxed. Mm. So, you know, obviously you say you, you like music. What's, what's the go-to artist right now? That's so difficult. <laughs> I can't give it out. I can't give that one up. But I say I listen to a lot of R&B. Mm. Um, that really gets me going. Uh, and a lot of the new albums that came out, Rod Wave just came out with a new album, mm. listen to that. Um, but just R&B, new R&B, but mainly like old school R&B is where my heart is. Oh uh, yeah, I was just saying there's a lot of really good R&B that came out, you know, uh, you know, late 90s, early mm -hmm. 2000s. It's, it's a lot of a lot of really, you know, really good hearted and stuff. Right. You know? So, um, what, so obviously if you could potentially put, obviously you've had a long, you know, long history of music, mm -hmm. long history of R&B, 
could you pro potentially name three artists that you'd say all time? No, I, I can never do. I never do these all time lists because you, you you miss out on so many great artists, so many great songs. You know, I love to listen to music for what the story is. You know, I love storytellers, people that just make music to make music for hits and never really hit home with me. People that can tell a story. That those are the ones that I love to listen to. It's like lyrical geniuses, you know, yeah. you find them in rap, you know, it's rare now that you find them in hip hop and rap mm -hmm. and R and B. It's 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 nice when you do find those little gold mines of right. of lyrical geniuses that you mm -hmm. find, you know, the, the Kendrick Lamars and, and Jake Gold in hip hop. Absolutely. Um, so what would you say that your favorite hobby outside of, of, of playing basketball is? That's tough. That's really tough. Uh, I just paint a picture for me. Like when I'm not playing basketball, if I'm at home, just sitting on my back deck with my family, enjoying family time. That's something that has always been my biggest thing. Like, I love spending time with my family. So outside of basketball, just being on my family and friends is, I would say, like the, my favorite thing to do. If I'm not doing that, then I'm listening to music. So I'm always just chilling and just have a really laid back atmosphere mm -hmm. around me. Uh, and so I, I ask this again. There's a, there's a very, very uh, popular answer when I ask this. If you can have one superpower, what would it be? This is a difficult question because I love Marvel. <laughs> you big Marvel guy? Big Marvel guy. Um, it's a hard one. Yeah, I might have to think on that one because there's so many things I would want to do. Um, yeah. But I love Vision. You know, if you ever seen Marvel, yes. I love Vision. Um, but there's so many other people that have done great things in, in terms of superheroes uh, that, I, that I love. Like Static Shock, when I was growing up watching him, you know, a black active black superhero was so cool to see. I say, what, 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 which Marvel films at the moment stand out towards you, you know, resonate more with you? See, that's the other thing, you can't do that. You <laughs> gotta watch the series and, and everything. I, I take everyone for what it is. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm watching a little bit of My Hero Academia too, which oh, is a little yeah. anime like that. My brother and I bond over that all the time. Mm. They're a big, big anime guy. Yeah, a lot, of, Decent, a, lot of the, yeah. a lot of Japanese culture is kind of leaking more into the Western world, mm. which is gr great because the, the artistry and yeah. the kind of the way it looks. Is that something that resonates with you as well? A little bit. I really got it from my brother. When I was younger, he used to read the books all the time. I'm like, why are you reading a book from the opposite direction? He was like, I was animated right from the back to the front. I'm like, okay. And I really get into it till I got older, and I, I'm really starting to like it. Yeah. Um, so, if uh, this is a big debate, and again, it's come down to picking favorites, but kind of linking more to the basketball. Okay. Yeah. You know, different generations grow up with different players. For sure. Who would you say is your your personally greatest NBA player? So, for my lifetime, like my generation, who I've seen, it's got to be LeBron. And, you know, and people always have the, the Michael Jordan and LeBron debate, but I never was able to see Mike up, in, up close in person. I can only see videos. But when I was younger, I remember so many things about LeBron, like 2003, he's in the, the high school jam fest. Like, I remember, like, just moments like that. So I pretty much grew up watching LeBron, so he's, he's my favorite player. Absolutely. I mean, that, that would be mine as well, you know, mm -hmm. growing up. I mean, Miami fan before, mm -hmm. before LeBron and then him coming into the team, I've yeah. watched him with, you know, very close up. So, right. um, and then obviously, you know, outside of the court, you can be very, you know, obviously out there or very just to yourself. So, would you say that you're more introverted or maybe more extroverted? I would say I'm a mix. Yeah. You know, I, I really like to be by myself, but I also have a tight group of friends that I can hang out with. But I'm not a guy that's going to go out and, you know, mingle with, you know, hundreds of people. If people know me, I have conversation and, and you know, never turn that down, but I'm not going to just go and exert myself and be around people. Definitely. So that brings us to uh, our next segment, which is going to be more looking towards your teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you, you haven't been here for too long, but right. hopefully they've kind of integrated you into the team. And for sure. I know that you're very competitive when it comes to the floor. Yeah. You like to, you know, get, you know, everyone barks at each other on, on the court when you're mm -hmm. training. So, uh, who uh, yeah, uh, from your time here, who would you say yeah, is has the worst fashion sense? Fashion. See, that's hard because we ain't, we haven't been able to go out together mm -hmm. or like really do too much, so you can't really tell yeah. who can dress and who can't dress. Yeah. Um, so I really can't comment on that one too much because I haven't seen a full array mm -hmm. of the wardrobe. Okay. Um, so who would you say? I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you've you know, obviously you're a big music guy as mm -hmm. well. Do you, who do you think? Uh, say if someone puts on music before a game, mm -hmm. who's the worst music taste that you've heard so far? <sighs> See, again, I've I've only heard so many people, so I really can't comment too much. But I know. I said Jordan got good music taste. Marty, Mike, uh, Fresh, Mika, I like, and and Brandon. That's the only people I guess I heard music didn't play, uh, and so does um, and Henry. Henry got good music taste too because we'll, we'll be singing stuff after practice, just hanging out. So I say uh, a lot of the guys said Henry had the had the worst music taste. So when I play music, Henry knows the song that I'm playing. That's how I know he got good music taste. He may have a wide array. 
yeah. in terms of music that he likes. But I know he, if I play some R and B and he knows the lyrics, we're on a, we're on a good path. I say it, it's better to have a wide, a wide instead of just a, a narrow. narrow. Exactly. So I mean, I know that he listens to a lot of music, and I know that uh, obviously you mentioned Fresh, Brandon, mm-hmm. and, and Mika. They they all um, they all I think they all also listen to Rod Wave as well. Mm-hmm. They they all went on the new album. So um, who would you say would potentially win in a rap battle? A rap battle? Yeah. On our team? Yes. That's tough. I'm gonna go with Fresh. Yeah. I'm gonna take Fresh. Does he? Does he kind of you know spit bars around the around the locker room a bit? Just when we talking, I'm, I'm gonna take Fresh. I think he got the confidence to win. Mm. I think he got the confidence to win. Yeah, he just carries that carries that swagger through yeah. it all. Just trying to get get the one up on yeah, him. Yeah, I think he got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, if if the entire if the entire roster was to have a three point contest, mm-hmm. uh, who would you think would come out on top? I think it'd be close. It'd be between Josh and Marty, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be between those two. That's your, I, I can't decide, but it'd be between those two. Uh, who do you think has the, the highest IQ or, the, or is the smartest player on, on the team so far? I think everybody has a sense of you know, IQ on the court. It shows flashes at different moments in time. So I wouldn't say there's like a, one person that has the highest, but I would say everybody collectively has a great IQ on the court. I was saying that there's been plenty of shouts for that. Yeah, Mark, Marty's been been one of the one of the shouts. You have, have been brought up in, in conversation too as being you know, one of the smartest and mm-hmm. probably the, one of the most professional players yeah. on the court at this point. So and there there are definitely a lot of players on the roster that could have that mm-hmm. have that shout. Um, who would you say if if everyone was to have a race, who do you think has has the win in in, in a race? A race, a full for like a hundred meter sprint. Hundred meters. Tall is gonna be up there. Depending on if he gets tired because he started running too fast. Um, Dan, because he got good long strides. Those two would probably be close. I'm gonna mm. put myself in the middle of the mix, depending depending on how some things shake out. So Tall has had a, I think, three shots in a row yeah. now. Uh, so is he like probably like on the court? Is he quick to zip around? He just, go, he just goes hard all the time, and that's why I say he might tire himself out in the first 50 meters. I might be able to catch him. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe trip him up yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and who? Like, I mean, this is probably going to be close as well. But obviously, training sessions. I've yeah. been I've been there watching them, and they can get pretty competitive. For sure. Who would you say is the most competitive? <sighs> ah. Right now, I think Tola has been lately been the most competitive guy on, in our training session. It's been awesome to see. It's been awesome to see his growth since I've been here. Uh, he's made tremendous strides in his game, and it's been awesome to see. And with the competitiveness, kind of brings a little trash talk too. Of course. Who tries to get in under the skin of, of any of his teammates during practice and tries to, tries to throw, throw little bits in there? I don't know if we have any trash talkers. Mm-hmm. I think we got certain guys, something happens, they'll like make a, make a comment about it, but we don't have a full on like just trash talker on our team. Yeah. So uh, that, that kind of brings us to the end of our, our teammates segment. Um, so you know, kind of, kind of draw it right into like the last segment that we have for this interview. Uh, what would you say that you would like to have done? Obviously, your career is pretty much just starting. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you say that you would have liked to have accomplished before your career is done? The biggest thing I come back to, I never go to accolades or you know wins, trophies. That's not really what I focus on. What I focus on is having fun and enjoying myself. So at the end of my career, if I can say, you know, I enjoyed every moment, then that's, that's a win for me. Then I did what I, exactly what I was supposed to do. Because at the end of the day, basketball is a game, and it's a tool to get you places. So for me, as long as I enjoy this game and I give it everything I got, then I won. I mean, do you see that, you know, we all see kind of the early stages of the night, you're giving it your all yeah. constantly. I mean, what, what, what's kind of like a short-term goal that you have you know, in your mind that you want to maybe go for this season or you know, for the next two or three seasons? And this is going to sound redundant, but smile every day. Like, every time I get on the court, just have a smile on my face. And I was writing this today in my journal. Was just I never want to look back and regret things. That I, and I want to enjoy every moment for what it is, good or bad. Enjoy every moment that I get on the floor and, and every opportunity that I have. So literally just go out there and have fun, smile, and enjoy my time. I was going to say, are you someone that definitely just doesn't let some some things get to you? Try not to. What's the, what's the point? Mm, exactly, exactly. you got to try and smile through everything. Even when some things do kind of, you know, annoy you. Of course. you just, you just got to try and get through it, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, obviously you don't talk about accolades or stats, but you know, are there any milestones that you might want to get to that you are looking forward to or 
you know, maybe places you want to go. Travel. I mean, at some point, I would love to be in Spain. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, I would love to get there. I think it'd be a great country to get to. Uh, one of my friends is in France right now, and he and he loves it, so maybe there. But, you know, I'm just trying to take each day for what it is. Like, I, tomorrow we got a game, so I got to focus on where I'm at right now. Really trying to be present in the moment. That's something I really I really focus on, being being present in the moment and, and taking each day for what it is. And, yeah, obviously, you, you kind of, your whole encore philosophy is, like, mm -hmm. really, like, you know, gritty. You, you like to do the work that some players might not want to do. You like to get stuck in. Right. Where, where does that come from? Where does that whole mentality of wanting to be the guy that does everything on the floor come from? Yeah, I, I think that's something I had in me, but it really came out when I was in prep school. My coach, Joe Mantegna, really pushed me to just be that guy that does everything. And same with my dad. Just, you know, you're on the floor, try to make things happen. And, you know, when you're the young guy, sometimes you're just trying to play. So you got to do everything you can to get on the floor. And that's something I developed at a young age. So now, just trying to take that forward as I continue throughout my career. I mean, even you know, at the young young age that you are at the moment, you know, you're still, you know, I would say, one of the most wisest guys in, in, the, in maybe in the league at the moment. You know, how, how, do you, how do you develop like a mind for like basketball IQ and you know, on and off the court stuff as well? Yeah, just watching a lot of film. Um, when I was young, we just watched a lot of basketball. And then it just comes down to my personality, just being who I am. And that's what I do every day. So when I get on the floor, just be Elijah Burns every day. Don't try to be anybody else. And the same thing off the court. And, and that's had lended me to success, and I'm just going to continue to do that. Do you think it comes from like maybe like you know discipline, you know, just try kind of like training yourself? Of well? course, of course. You know, everybody faces bumps in the road, you know, along the way. And I, I've had some great mentors that have helped me along the way to get me to where I am today. And, and the things that they taught me, the things that I've learned from experiences, are, are the reason why I am who I am right now and where I am right now. Um, I know you obviously you mentioned you know, idols and, you know, and people that have helped you along the way. You know, have you, not relating to basketball, do you have any non-basketball like idols or people that have helped you that you're, you're just in, infinitely grateful for? Yeah, so for me, like, we always talk about a village. And, and my village is my aunts, my uncles, family, friends, you know, coaches that I've had. Because to me, a coach isn't just a basketball coach. You have to be able to grow that young man off the floor. And that's how, what my coaches have been. So like I spoke on Joe Van Tegna, he's like an uncle to me. We don't always talk about basketball, we talk about life. And it's helped me grow uh, and learn, you know, as I'm progressing. And, 20, about to be 25 next month, so as the older I get, I'm, I'm still learning, you know. Um, so I really don't try to shoot too high and say, you know, I'm, I'm LeBron James, is a great basketball player, but I don't know LeBron. So he can impact my life from things that he's doing, but the people that are closer to me can have a, a greater impact on my life that I see every day or see every couple months. So that's how I kind of look at it. I, I choose those people and put them at a higher, a higher setting than, you know, people that are a celebrity status. And you, you, know, you mentioned coaches as well, obviously trying to integrate into the team, you've got to know the coach as well. Uh, how's your relationship grown with, with Coach Newby uh, since you've been here? It's been good. He's just allowed me to play, and, uh, and like I said, just from the beginning, be myself. He's allowed me to go out there and compete and play as hard as I can. I mean, it, do you think that Coach Matt Newby is one of those coaches that he wants to bring the best out in everybody, and he gets those results as well? No, I just think he's a coach that wants to win. You know, at the end of the day, players make plays. Coach, you put you in a position to make those plays, but every coach, every player wants to win. So he's going to do his best job to put us in positions to, to win games. And, you know, Obviously, when you get onto the court, you, you want to do the best that you can. What's the what's the main driving motivation for you when you do step onto that court? Is you know just trying to trying to get that win. Yeah, for me, I look at it. I'm just grateful for every opportunity. You know, God put me in position to have fun, and I'm playing a game as my profession. So I really don't try to put too much stress on myself. I just try to go out there and play. And like I'll say, and I say it again, just have fun. Like at the end of the day, we're playing a game, and that helps me relax and just play. Um. Yeah. Obviously, grew up, grew up watching so many fantastic players. You know, the 03 uh, draft class. You know, they they're growing up and obviously yeah. kind of passing now. Uh, do you think that obviously you say that you play the Elijah Burns way? Do you do, does that kind of have any you know chopped up bits of any players that you kind of grew up kind of idolizing? Um, people that I watched a lot. I say this: like people that I watched a lot growing up. Paul Millsap. I love watching his game. Boris Diaw. I love watching his game too, just his cerebralness, you know, to be able to play past it. And then as he got older and less athletic, he was still able to be super effective. Uh, I really enjoy watching his game. Uh, obviously, you watch LeBron, I can't do a lot of the things that LeBron can do, but, you know, I try to do like, maybe his, his leadership. I love watching LeBron's leadership. So every time you see him on the court, I'm usually huddling my teammates up and, and things like that. So I pick pieces from everybody, but mainly, like, the, the man that I became, and that's who I try to be every day. 
And uh, you know, that kind of brings us to the to the end of our, our interview. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to speak to you, uh, Elijah. So uh, obviously we, we haven't been able to have fans in in, in this season. So uh, you've definitely been one of the fan favourites, that's for sure. The hard work has been paying off, and the the Wolfpack have been very, very, very uh, appreciative of, uh, of your time here. So uh, if you have one message to to the Wolfpack, uh, let it be known. Yeah, I just say thank you for everything. You know, I know you guys can't come to the games and. I just appreciate your, everyone's support um, by watching the games and reaching out uh, via social media. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity and uh, go Wolfpack. Thank you very much. Thank you.